Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we're on the website of Tenants Auctioneers and we're going to have a look at a, another auction. So what we're going to do is have a look through this latest auction catalogue that they've uh, just uh, put online. It's um, musical instruments and scientific instruments etc. But we're just going to look at the musical instrument part. Um, there are some mechanical musical instruments that we might look at at the end but they're a little bit out of our normal viewing. Um, so this auction is finishing on the 27th of uh, September, it is the 20th today so a few days left to go, 24% is the buyer's premium so if you, whatever you pay, uh, whatever the final bid is, 24% of that uh, goes on top to be your final price. This is a UK based auction so bear that in mind, import export fees if you're trying to ship something out of the UK, CITES restrictions, all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, so yeah, just to say if you haven't been on this uh, channel before then a lot of the things we do is go through musical instrument auctions and just check out what's going on and other stuff about musical instruments in general. If you like this video please consider liking, subscribing or comment because it really does help. Um, yeah, so without further ado I think let's just get on with it. So there's 112 musical instruments as such and then there's a few other mechanical ones that we might uh, get into. So let's just see what we have, if there's anything interesting. So we have a violin. I think this is your standard kind of trade violin there with a bow. They just give you a bit of a description there and estimate 80 to 100. You can ask for condition reports, etc. all of that kind of stuff. And there's the buyer's premium of 24%. Another violin here, 14 inch one piece back labelled uh, Dominicus Reef in Tyrol so slightly more interesting than the last one four to six hundred uh, it does look like the kind of violin that people would say is from the Tyrol region kind of on the on the border there um, it's definitely had quite a few uh, repairs and things in the past it's in a bit of a funny state no picture of the back I don't think which is unfortunate sometimes tenants don't give a full set of pictures but interesting enough violin um, kind of late 18th century is probably about right so four to six hundred is is a fair estimate it might go a bit higher than that I suspect then we've got another violin here let's see what we've got um, labeled made by Edwin Pollard 1914 40 to 60 on that. Maybe we'll zoom out a little bit so we can see it in one go without having to keep scrolling down. So it looks like it uh, probably is the work of a amateur or kind of English maker there. Slightly kind of interesting varnish, quite heavy edge work there, but actually not too bad. Varnish is a little bit funny. I quite like the scroll. It's quite interesting to nice to see the tool marks there. So 40 to 60, I think that's more than fair estimate really. There's a bow as well that's seen better days. Right, one of these kind of standard trade violins with a lion head on. Nothing too much to say there. 80 to 120. Another violin here. Looks like a trade violin. Perhaps... A French one maybe could be wrong 80 to 120 that's more than fair violin labeled Sepp Hornsteiner Mittenwald 1972 this looks like standard kind of trade violin 4 to 600 seems a bit optimistic um, another violin here labeled Carl Stoller's Grand Solo Violin I think once again we're in that uh, trade territory there 80 to 120 that's fair enough another violin here um, no label but scratched in names on the back quite a cool looking scroll there at the front I quite like that it's kind of more interesting than some of the other instruments it's hard to hard to say exactly what's going on there back looks a bit kind of like a trade instrument but some of the corner work is since interesting you can see the name scratched in the back so i think it's you know halfway it's hard to tell it's one of those kind of ones you'd want to look at in person but anyway 80 to 120 
it's a fair estimate another violin here no label cased with a bow looks kind of a bit interesting a bit different 40 to 60 on that looks like it's not your average uh, thing varnish is a bit uh, funny on the neck let's have a look at the scroll there a couple of bits and bobs yeah that one's kind of uh, I think that's another violin isn't it does it have a and that's interesting we've got two pictures there. I'm not sure if there's two violins in this uh, lot uh, a bit confusing but anyway this first one here definitely looks like it's uh, not a trade violin another violin labelled Nicholas Amatus looks kind of interesting there 60 to 80 let's see it's kind of looks kind of interesting massive soundpost crack on the back there which is going to be extremely problematic there but quite nice corner work let's have a look at the scroll there see if there's anything interesting going on I think it probably was a nice violin at some point 60 to 80 reflects the soundpost crack on the back unfortunately another violin here it's cased together with another violin this looks pretty similar to that uh, other violin that we saw the one which was labelled uh, Reef, the possible Tyrol uh, violin, looks very similar quite a nice back on this it's a similar kind of deal let's just scroll there 60 to 80 seems like a very low estimate another violin there that looks kind of halfway interesting as well let's have a look at the back yeah it's not too bad it's kind of interesting looking violin so that's I think quite a good lot there 60 to 80 well wow, there's a million pictures on there I don't know what's going on I feel like there's some of the lots might have been a bit messed up here there's just loads of different violins a bit confusing that looks like a kind of trade violin that one that's uh, a bit strange <laughs> it's just going on forever not 100% sure what's going on with some of the lots here but anyway yeah if all of that stuff is included then 60 to 80 more than fair another violin here that looks fairly standard I think that's your trade violin right violin labeled Barnes and Mullins Stradivari interesting color to the varnish actually doesn't look too bad an instrument there three to five hundred that's maybe a bit pricey violin uh, labeled made by Robert Lockhead copy of Stradivarius Glasgow 1892 80 to 120 interesting violin interesting kind of F hole uh, position there looks a little bit uh, non uh, Stradivari to me right violin no label quite a nice uh, scroll there nice pegs looks in fairly good condition don't think the bows are anything looks quite tidy up let's have a look at the uh, back 80 to 120 is that all we get okay that seems to be all that we get I do feel like some of the pictures are kind of missing or uh, messed up on this auction so you know another violin labeled Joseph Chano 800 to 1200 on this once again difficult to tell and there's no picture of the back so all a bit strange another violin here no label very pink looking I don't know if they've got some weird setting on their camera um, but anyway difficult to once again know what's going on with some of these uh, images the violin here Nicholas Amatus some interesting fluting there on the F holes I think this is just a 19th century kind of trade violin but of a better kind 80 to 120 seems fair 
at the violin. Written in pencil, A Brown, New Nuttle. Okay. Does look like a possible English violin. Looks a little bit uh, rough, the workmanship on that one, to be quite honest. 80 to 120, that seems fair enough. Now the violin here, we don't even have a picture of the front of this one, but this looks like a fairly standard trade violin. Now the violin labelled S Neems. It's got a insurance estimate for 5,000. Two to three they're looking for it. I mean, nice choice of wood on the back. Looks like a nice enough instrument. It's got a leffin bow, so I don't know, it seems a little bit high, the estimate, but you never know. Right, violin stamped under the button Dear Love Maker Leads. Interesting looking violin, interesting scroll. Three to five hundred, it's one of those ones that uh, you'd probably want to look at in person. I like that scroll, it's a nice, interesting scroll. Right, another violin here, Dulcis and uh, Fortis, so kind of budget uh, French violins here. Oh, sold with a uh, mandolin, labeled Giuseppe Vinaccia. Okay, well, that's interesting. I mean, if it was actually a Vernaccia um, mandolin and it might actually be quite uh, valuable so that would potentially go for a fair bit I think the way that they lump in these lots is really quite confusing it's like a whole load of bows and this is a really strange lot I'm not really understanding what's going on here how many other violins are there in this uh, in this lot, uh, this is very extremely confusing. It just seems to be going on forever. Anyway, millions of things in this lot, 50 to 70, that's a pretty good lot. Violin bow, stamped Egid Dorfler, 150 to 200, nice kind of pins there on the button. A violinda, one of these weird things there. Cello there, labelled Carlo Bagonzi. Okay, eight hundred to twelve hundred. Looks interesting enough. I think that will do pretty well. I would, uh, I would think. All right, let's see what else we've got. We must be getting close towards the end of. Uh, these strings just looks a Romanian cello there, nothing too crazy. Another cello here with a Strad label that looks like a kind of tradey cello, maybe kind of late 19th century, early 20th century, something like that, I would think. Another cello, Strad label, much the same, looks like kind of early 20th century thing, possibly double bass here let's have a look it's got a letter from Lily Bennett it said it's a typical type of Medifino by uh, Thibberville Lamy it's got a bass bow as well two and a half to three thousand looks interesting enough I'm not sure if that price is good or not. Right, we're on to clarinets here, buffet clarinet there, five to seven hundred. Another buffet crampon, three to five hundred. Clarinet by Yamaha, seventy to ninety. Clarinet by Corton, forty to sixty. Clarinet in A Emperor by Bougie and Hawks, eighty to hundred and twenty. Clarinet pair Bougie and Hawks Symphony, two to three hundred. Quite a nice case. Flute by Trevor James, 60 to 80. Oboe by Buffet, 100 to 150 there. 
pair of Bujian Hawk Symphony 1010 clarinets, 600 to 900 on that. Bujian Hawk's Imperial French Horn, 100 to 150. Bujian Hawk's Imperial Baritone Horn, 100 to 150. Bujian Hawk's Imperial Euphonium there, 200 to 300. Antoine Courtois Cornet there, 40 to 60. Cornet Dynasty model by DEG and another one there, 60 to 80. Getsen Eterna Cornet with a Bujian Hawk's 100 to 150. Tenor Horn by Amati Krasilis, 50 to 80. Various brass instruments, okay. So, tuba, euphonium, etc. So, a collection there, 80 to 120, there, is the estimate. Yamaha trombone there, 150 to 200. Got a boss chorus pedal and a couple of microphones there. A accordion here and some other bits, 40 to 60. Concertina, miniature concertina, two to three hundred. An Anglo system miniature concertina, interesting. Well, we know that people do like concertinas, so I'll probably do well. Hone a button accordion there. It's got a mixer and speakers, Roland synth there. Sennheiser microphone, microphones there. A whole load of vintage microphones, a little bit out of our way. Yamaha Tyros keyboard there. Mandolin and a ukulele. Banjo. Okay. Six string banjo. Stamped Richard Spencer. Banjo there. Four string. Clifford Essex and Son. Okay. Five string banjo there. Five string banjo by W. Temlet, 40 to 60 on that. Banjo five string, left handed. Banjo by Bacon and Day, 50, sorry, 500 to 700. It's quite a nice kind of pearl to the uh, headstock there. Banjo by Clifford Essex and Son, 800 to 1200. Banjo by Clifford Essex and some there are a lot of uh, banjos around for sure. Another Clifford Essex and Son banjo there, five to seven hundred. Another banjo, Clifford Essex and Son. Another one. Banjo by Frank Merton, Glasgow. Banjo by Gretsch, okay, interesting, two to three hundred. Banjo by Vega, five to seven hundred. Banjo by La Scala Grand, or three to five hundred on that, that's interesting of marquetry on that one. Banjo La Scala Grand again and definitely a lot of banjos in this one. Banjo Paramount Leader WML Lang Banjo Lady that's quite a nice one actually. Perloid Veneer that's quite nice quite like that one, 100 to 150. Banjo mandolin there, 60 to 90. 1001 banjos, this is the gigantic banjo book they do see for sale every now and then. 250 to 350, it's a fair estimate. I think they usually look for about 500 pounds or so for this. So if you love banjos, that is the book that you definitely need. Some guitars now, Aria Pro 2, semi-acoustic. Epiphone 12 string there, Fender Baja Telecaster, 3 to 500, Fender Blues Deluxe Amp, 3 to 400, another one here, 3 to 400, Fender Champion Amplifier there, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, 
Fender Jazz Master 32500 reissue of the 1962 Fender Neon Sign 250 300 that might uh, sell pretty well Fender Sky Stratocaster nice pink Fender Telacoustic Guitar G Warren Free Spirit Acoustic Guitar interesting Gibson Les Paul Custom 2 to 3 and they don't uh, say which uh, date it's from they got some internal shots there I'm sure you can ask them for more info Green Man by DN Acoustic Guitar Gretsch New Yorker Archtop it's got a nice 2 to 300 Gretsch Wild West Sweets Hearts Acoustic. Good loads of guitar pedals there. The old Dan Electro ones are quite interesting. Big Boss pedal. James Nelligan Electro Acoustic 80 to 120. K Hollow, Hollow Body Electric 80 to 120. It's pretty cool. Interesting looking thing. K K one six one V guitar. That's another pretty cool looking uh, looking one. That's pretty cool. Eighty two hundred twenty. It's not bad. Marshall amp and head. So a cab and head. Music Max Stingray bass there. Seven hundred to nine hundred. The lap steel guitar there and amp. That's got a nice two to three hundred. Regal Resonator Rickenbacker 360 12 string 800 to 1200 I'm sure that will also be popular Tanglewood Java Acoustic 3 acoustic guitars ok can blow that up a little bit more Trace Elliott Guitar Amp there Vintage Archtop Guitar Fox Tone Bender Pedal 1966 Quite a rare one there Looking for 4 to 600 on that Watkins Copycat Echo Unit Yamaha CJ12 Acoustic Beatles Record Cabinet Okie dokie So I think that is the main section now of musical instruments An interesting amount of stuff There's a little mechanical section here where we have kind of gramophones and things like that uh, so other kind of interesting bits and pieces but possibly not really relevant to us although I did spot one interesting instrument I think there's an organ somewhere down here in amongst all of the other kind of little music boxes and things which are nice uh, yes here is this uh, large and a uh, fine early 19th century chamber barrel organ on stand, probably by Flight and Robson, 1000 to 1500 on that. So I thought that was quite interesting. But uh, yeah, essentially that is it. That is an overview of the um, the latest auction by Tenants uh, Auctioneers based in the UK. A few interesting kind of violins, uh, some pretty decent banjos, actually some decent wind instruments there the brass bits um, d definitely lots of banjos for sure you can see some interesting guitars and things overall fairly uh, fairly good auction I uh, always like to see more pictures especially of the violins and things but we uh, do what we can a little bit confused by some of the images and stuff and multiple lots and stuff like that but anyhow they seem to have some kind of pink filter on their camera making lots of violins look pink but anyway i'm sure you can ask them for more pictures and more clarifications and condition reports etc so yeah that's it basically thanks a lot for watching i appreciate it and i'll catch you next time ciao